WikiHow 6 Compilation How to Behave Like a Typical Teenager EYI How to Enjoy Being a Teenager YI How to Stay Out of Trouble YI How to Be a Normal Teen, Girls, YI How to Act at a Girl's House YI How to Be a Loner in School YI 80 of the Best Would You Rather Prompts Y How to Behave Like a Typical Teenager Download Article What Does Normal Mean, Anyway? Co-authored by William Gardner, PSYD Last Updated, the 21st of June, 2024 References How to Act Normal How to Look Normal How to Practice Being Normal Tips Warnings When you're a teenager, there is not one way to be normal. It depends on your interests, likes, and dislikes. 1. All teens experience a range of different emotions and experiences. You may experience an intense desire to fit in with some group, to be accepted by your peers, of similar age, level, and interests. It's normal to feel like you're not normal. Enough. We all want to fit in somewhere, and fitting in doesn't mean you have to. Become a mindless drone with a relentless drive to conform. Embrace your inner weirdness and become the truest version of yourself. Method. 1. How to act normal. Download article. 1. Spend time with people who are doing positive activities that you want to do. It's getting increasingly easy to spend too much time alone. While some solitude can be good, even loners have to come out to work, play or eat. Sometimes. To act normally and behave in a well-adjusted manner, not too different, it's important to spend time around other people socializing and learning from them, so you can interact more directly and easily get involved. Just being around a variety of people in a coffee shop, or at a restaurant, or at the movies, can help you learn about others and feel less isolated. This will make you more comfortable in your own skin, which in turn will make you more experienced at opening up and interacting. Find places where you're likely to run into like-minded people. Love comics. Quit buying them online and hit up your local comic shop. Love to make art. Head to an art class, craft store or the museum. Take a class in one of your interests and talk some. With others learning the same topic or skill. Get in a choir or Take music lessons. Some churches have music school and sport. Activities. Online friends exist in a grey area. They're real a lot of the time, but our interactions online are much different than our up. Close, mano a mano interactions. Try to balance your time. Socializing online with at least as much, if not more face-to-face -face. interactions 2. avoid hanging out with people who act out in negative wild or crazy ways having a pessimistic excitable or silly friend is fine but if being around them makes you uncomfortable consider whether you should keep them as a friend they may get themselves and you into unwanted difficulties and Disgrace, so to speak. Avoid getting closer or hooked up with hateful, troubled, mean, destructive or violent persons. If you're good at something, offer up your help to those who may need it. When asked for, give your opinion or assistance. Don't go looking for trouble, let it come to you, and try to stay out of it. 3. Pay attention to the body language of others. 
when you're around people. Keep an eye out for any clues they might give regarding how to behave. Normally in situations. Mirror the behavior of others, if it makes you comfortable. When you're in the library and everyone looks very studious, quiet, and absorbed in their work, it's probably not the best time to start cutting up and trying to make jokes. If everyone's dancing at a school dance, it might be normal to dance, but you don't have to. It's normal to feel both ways. If your neighbor at the lunch table keeps trying to make eye contact and smiles continuously at you, it's probably a good time for a conversation, if you feel open. Try being friendly. Available. Communicating people often have open posture shoulders. Back, head up, not too relaxed. Relaxing but not acting open may be about, instead, acting tired, sleepy, angry, shy or grumpy. Arms and legs crossed may be a sign that they are satisfied to sit alone, not looking to be friendly. Learn to recognize and not act that way in your own interactions. If people are uncommunicative or closed off to you head down. Arms crossed they probably don't want to talk. If you press the issue, it's possible that you might make them feel uncomfortable. Learn to recognize this and disengage from the conversation or interaction. Give them some space. 4. Be a good listener and wait for your turn to speak. When you're talking with someone, or with a group of people, try to balance listening and talking in equal measure. You don't have to be the one to contribute the most if you want to be. Noticed it's just as important to be an active listener. Look at the person who's talking, nod your head to show that you're listening, and really listen to what is being said. 2. Stay on topic. If everyone in a group is going around telling stories about their weekend, tell a story about your weekend, if you have one. It would be kind of strange to break the spirit of the moment, I had to watch my dad eat pickled herring. He eats weird stuff all the time. Hopefully, that's not really about your weekend. Don't hijack a conversation and take it elsewhere, or else, expect groans and protests at your sense of humor. Breaking the line of thought, unless it's time to change the topic. Listening doesn't mean looking across the room or thinking of what you're going to say until a moment of silence appears in a conversation for you to fill. However, listening means actively. Receiving and responding to what the other is saying nicely, not just trying to think of what you're going to say next to top that bit. Accept the other's points as worthwhile, even if you've heard it already. Then without a yawn or cut down say, hey, yeah, excellent point forward slash that's true, but have you ever been to forward slash done this? Underscore 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 3 5 Set your personal boundaries A teenager is an individual who wants to be Seen as mature and experienced as one's peers Due to this, while you strive to Become the best you, it can often be tempting to get pushed or pulled into Things you might not be ready for, or even interested in Smoking Drinking. Experimenting with the thrills of asking for dates, actually going on dates, when. Parents permit, holding hands, hugging, kissing and deciding your approach to. Love, expressing your newfound state of being a teen. Balancing all these. Aspects is what normal teenagers confront in their everyday lives. While there's.
not just one set way to approach each of these aspects, what you should know is that it's your decision to stand for your values, beliefs and to accept your responsibility to understand the consequences of conduct and behavior in close relationships. It's your life. Make your choices, the right ones, to draw your best boundaries close to your heart. The closer you set your daily life boundaries to your present norms and accepted truths, where you're coming from, the sooner you can be well adjusted in your way. You'll be able to avoid other way out freaky or boring stuff and be able to expand and extend your near boundaries, launching out near your everyday unusual stuff. Keep it real. Keep it simple. Is easier than going off track or out into the far off unknown. Wanting to fit in is normal, and it's true that engaging in risky behavior seems like a way to fit in and get people to respect you, but why would you compromise your personality and beliefs? If you're not being yourself, it's not you there. Respecting, or even noticing. Keep it cool, another good boundary to keep in mind is secrecy. It's okay to keep some things to yourself. It's almost too easy to put every event, success and failure, every frustration, anger and joy up on Facebook as a status update. Does it all really need to be there for everyone to see and diss you? You give the answer. 6. Make your room an awesome sanctuary. For a teenager, there's nothing more critical than having a space all to your own. Make your room as unique as you are, filled with posters or candles, records or drawings. Fill it with yourself. Paint it whatever color you want and fill it with things you like to look at. Take some time thinking about what would make the ideal room and get permission to make it that way. If you don't have your own room, find somewhere you feel comfortable that you can spend time in. Take a walk out into the yard or the woods, find a great sitting park bench, or find a table by a window that you love at the library, or spend time in a friend's basement den. Try to find somewhere quiet and available to you where you can find peace. Method 2. How to look normal Download article 1. Wear clean clothes that fit you properly. There's no normal type of clothes to wear. Styles change all the time and it can be very difficult to keep up. Wear whatever is comfortable and affordable for you, but make sure the clothes are as flattering as possible. Skinny jeans and crop tops may be in, but just because they're popular or normal doesn't mean they're necessarily right for your body type. Wear clothes that will flatter your figure and feel comfortable, not something that will leave you feeling unconfident or exposed. Don't be a wannabe. Don't be afraid to have your own style. If you think throwback. Basketball jerseys and athletic shorts are cool, you're in good company. If you think rugby shirts and khaki pants look good, you're in safe waters. The important normal constant is that whatever you wear is clean and form-fitting. 4. 2. Learn a little about contemporary fashion. It's a good idea to pay attention to what other kids are wearing, not because you must conform and wear the same thing, but so you can at least have some concept of the average dress. Where? Then, if you choose to go in another direction, you'll be aware of what you're doing and not end up wearing plaid grandpa pants and golfing shoes too. School because you think it's normal. 
you don't have to go to expensive stores to dress normally. Box Stores like Target, Walmart, and other outlets usually have sale. Items that are affordable and current. At thrift stores, try to find the newest cleanest clothes available that are in your size. In middle school especially, it can seem that all anyone cares about is getting the next must-have clothes trend which are usually expensive and will be forgotten in another six months. Anyway. 3. Groom yourself. If you want to look normal, you don't have to do anything. Fancy with your grooming, however, a little effort will go a long way. Keep yourself clean and well kept and your confidence will be higher knowing that you're looking your best. 5. Brush your teeth and floss. Your smile will be friendly and picture ready with proper dental care. Having healthy teeth can up your confidence significantly. Take a shower at least every other day, and every day that you exercise. Wash your hair with shampoo and clean your body with soap. Keep your nails neatly clipped and clean. Normal girls and boys also enjoy painting fingernails sometimes, which is perfectly appropriate if you want. Try to keep the paint fresh and remove it when it starts becoming chipped. Talk to your parents about when it's appropriate to start wearing makeup if you want to. Use a small amount of natural coloring to highlight your beauty if you choose to. 4. Style your hair and keep it clean. Your hair is just as important as any other part of your body, it takes some work to keep it healthy and clean. Your hair should be washed at least every two to three days to keep it strong and lustrous. Both boys and girls should comb their hair regularly to keep it untangled and healthy. If you use products, don't go overboard. A little mousse, gel, or hairspray can go a long way. You don't want a crispy frosted flat. Top like it's 1996. Aim for a natural look that highlights your normal hair. Experiment with new haircuts, going for a buzz or growing it out. Like a rocker if you want. Being a teenager is the one time you can experiment with your personality and your identity. 5. Take care of your body. When you're young, it seems like you're invincible. You can eat like there's no tomorrow, stay out all night and go through your day. Like it's nothing, and recover from injuries super fast. Unfortunately, it won't. Last. It's important to build the good habits that will ensure your health. Throughout your teenage years and further on too. Pay attention to what and how much you're eating. Most teenagers have crazy high metabolisms due to growth spurts. Meaning that you'll be able to eat lots and lots of high calorie food without gaining extra weight, especially if you're physically active and play sports. When that high metabolism ends, though, or you stop playing sports, it's possible to suddenly gain lots of weight. It's important to develop a love of physical activity early on, so you can build the good habits that will keep you healthy in the long run. 6. You don't have to be one of the jocks to enjoy exercise. If you love basketball but don't want to play on the team, go to the park and shoot hoops. Who cares if you miss more than you make? If you don't love playing any competitive sports, try out hiking around the woods and getting into nature, or see if you don't enjoy rock climbing or other solo adventures. Method 3. How to practice being normal. Download article. 
1. Find hobbies that help you relax. As a teen, you should have hobbies and interests to keep you occupied and engaged. School probably won't cut it. Try to find extracurricular hobbies that will let you blow off some steam and find enjoyment. Some kind of extracurricular activity can be a great way of meeting other kids your age and socializing without having to meet people yourself. Many teenagers take sports very seriously. Find out what team sports are offered at your school and consider trying out for the team. If you don't like any of the sports offered, tennis lessons, golf lessons, or other individualized sports might be more appropriate for you. Heck, check out learning how to fence. Check out clubs at school. Sports aren't even close to being the only way to socialize at school. Foreign language clubs, chess clubs, art clubs, ecology clubs, and all sorts of organizations are available to students for fun and learning outside of school. If you don't like any of the clubs at your school, check out after school programs at the YMCA or other youth center in your town, or check out a youth group at a church. Try playing music. Whether in marching band, concert band or by starting your own garage band, music can be a great outlet. For teenagers, studies show that teens who study music learn more efficiently and have a great amount of fun and camaraderie playing. 2. Broaden your world view. As you get older, it's important to learn as much as you can about other people and learn to exercise your empathy skills. A child thinks only of themselves, and an adult is able to think more selflessly, but a teenager is somewhere in the middle. It can be tough. Mission trips and exchange programs can be excellent and Effective experiences for many teenagers if such opportunities are available. Likewise, getting a part-time job and learning to work for your keep is an important growing up step that you can learn in the summertime or on the weekends after school. Read as much as you can about as much diverse topics that you can. Travel from the comfort of a chair by checking out novels, travelogues, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever you like reading. Read some things that are challenging and some things that are easy. Read all the time. Read everything. 3. Try out different ways to express yourself. Being a teen is a time of experimenting trying on new identities until you learn which one fits you the best. In a given year, you might switch back and forth between thinking you want to be a doctor and loving your position on the soccer team to wanting nothing but to write poetry and hang out with painters and paint your fingernails black. That's okay. That's normal. Try out being an art kid. Take some art classes and learn the fundamentals to see you if you'd like to spend your days in the studio, creating strange masterpieces. Try out the exciting world of mystery. Lots of teenagers take solace in the dark clothes and powerful vibes of a mysterious person. While it might seem weird it's pretty normal. Embrace your inner athlete. Jocks don't have to be the villains. From high school drama movies. Be a well-adjusted athlete who takes sporting seriously. Make it your thing. 4. Find like-minded people. Find a community of people you like and people who are like you and get to know them well. Hang out in school and outside of school. 
support each other and lift each other up. Emphasize forging a few strong relationships over lots of meaningless ones. It's not worth having 800 Facebook friends if you can't talk to any of them in real life. Alternatively, it's also a good idea to meet lots of people who you don't necessarily have a lot in common with. If you're a sporty athlete, hang out with some of the art kids every now and then to see what you have in common. Try to make all sorts of different friends. 5. Make room in your life for school and work. Having fun is important, but taking your responsibilities seriously is just as important a part of growing up. Save enough time in your busy teenage schedule to complete your school work. And work as hard as possible at doing well. Even if you think you're sure what you want to do in life, and that plan doesn't involve algebra trigonometry, give it your best shot. You never know how you might regret blowing off that welding class, or zoning out during sewing down the road. Make sure you take excellent notes. Notes force you to pay attention, improve your memory and provide you with a helpful Study guide. Do your homework. Don't slack off on it, because believe it or not, it really does help you learn. Pay attention in class and ask questions to stay engaged. Respect your teachers and try to make the best of it. 6. Give some thought to the future. Where do you want to be in 10 years? In 20. What do you want to do with your life? Tough questions for anybody. And uncomfortable questions for most, especially teenagers. But it's something you're going to have to struggle with. The more you struggle with it, the better. You'll prepare yourself for your teenage years, and the more normal you'll be. It's something everyone struggles with before transitioning into adulthood. If you want to go to college, start researching affordable places. You might attend that seem to be full of people like you, or places that offer the kinds of specialties you'd like to study. Many teens who struggle to make friends or fit in during high school really come into stride during college. It's also normal and perfectly fine to have no idea what you want to do with your life. Don't worry about it too much. That's perfectly normal. When people ask, tell them that you're just trying to get through your teens first. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Learn when to stop and say no. For example say no when someone asks you to. Drink or try a cigar forward slash cigarette. Be an individual by not copying or following fads, actors, singers, athletes and. Their styles. Have your own opinions, but don't exclude everyone else's. Think. Outside the box, but most importantly. Develop many, small, good goals to grow and change for the better. In the words of Steve Jobs, the people who think they can change the world are the ones who do, not those who think they must. Follow the latest ideas, fads, and styles. Don't feel pressured to conform to only one style. Wear what you want in spite of peer pressure. Listen to music you like. Be yourself. How to enjoy being a teenager. Download article. Parts. 1. Setting realistic expectations. 2. Developing yourself. 3. Developing relationships. Plus show one more. Other sections. Questions and answers. Related articles. References Article Summary 
co-authored by Ashley Pritchard, Ma. Last updated, the 10th of January, 2024 approved. Being a teenager can be difficult, since you're dealing with hormones, higher expectations, and the process of finding your place in the world. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the teen years. If you're looking to have enjoyable teenage years, there are many things you can do, big and small, that can make a huge difference. Part 1. Setting Realistic Expectations Download Article 1. Understand that there's no one way to be a teen and no set-in-stone way to enjoy your teenage years. Everyone is different, especially in their teenage years. There's really no way to enjoy being a teenager except for the way you make on your own. Some teens prefer to spend their teenage years with friends, while others prefer to study and work. Some prefer to be quiet. Wallflowers, while others are loud and don't care if they stand out. Saying that there's any one way to enjoy your teenage years is wrong, this article is only a guideline and doesn't need to be followed to the letter. What is enjoyable for you may not be for someone else, and that is okay. Some things are commonly enjoyed by teens but not by all. Turning 13 does not mean suddenly you wake up and everything has changed. 1. 2. Avoid media-based expectations, good or bad. Being a teenager is not necessarily any easier or more difficult than any other life stage. Although adolescence is a time of great change, this does not necessarily mean it will be the most difficult time of your life. If you get wound up with concerns that this new life stage will be fraught with ever-present drama, the truth is that this is just another stage of your life which you will get through as much as you did in toddlerhood long ago. Remember the media presents teenagers inaccurately. Teens and their lives are often very narrowly portrayed on TV, movies, and literature. Don't base your ideas on popular, or once popular, dramas about teen life. Likewise, be careful of comparing yourself or others to actors in teenage dramas. Often these actors are in their 20s, sometimes even 30s. They're often unusually talented with their hair and makeup professionally done. The homemade videos on YouTube that feature actual teenagers are far more realistic and accurate than the movies and TV. 3. Realize that the teen years are not all alike. There are six years between 13 and 19, and there are a lot of differences between them. Middle school is different from high school, which is different from beginning the adult work, world, college, or trade school. The awkward, lanky 13-year-old may be a confident military-bound individual at 18. Part 2. Developing Yourself Download Article 1. Develop Your Sense of Self Focusing more on your own thoughts and goals, instead of what other people think. 2. For lots of people, the teenage years are full of worries, stop paying so much attention to them. Many worries are based on what other people think, for example, what if they don't like me after this? Or what if my mom gets mad that I don't study medicine like she wants? rather than what you think. Go ahead and do what you want to do, without factoring in the opinion of others, dye your hair a wacky color, wear what's comfortable and not what's trendy, call your crush, choose your own path in life, 
and don't worry about what others think of your choices. At the end of the day, it's your life, so live it the way you want to. Of course, there are some limits to this. You may want to speak your mind, for example, and it's okay to have your opinions, but you don't want to offend people or start an argument in an inappropriate place. Some social rules, such as not hitting annoying people, are important to follow. Learn when it's important to listen to social rules, and not what you think. 2. Discover and engage in your interests. 3. When you were younger, people always told you to find hobbies, and chances are, you have at least a few basic interests that you can engage in. Use these to your advantage. Can you pick something you want to practice and dedicate more time towards, for example, playing an instrument, or delve into a subcategory of your interest, for example, moving from simple writing to writing poetry or literature. Don't be afraid to try new things. It's never too late to check out a new interest, and, who knows, maybe you'll even find your life passion by doing so. Consider balancing your interests so that you have a wide variety. For example, if your biggest hobby is computer programming, maybe try a more art-oriented hobby like painting, or learn a language. Just because you're a tech nerd or an art geek doesn't mean your interests have to stick firmly in that area. It's boring to have interests that are only in one area. Explore your style and your interests. Now is the time to experiment, don't feel the need to stick to just one niche. From fashion to hobbies to music and movies, you can explore all kinds of possible interests. Don't feel bound by tradition or labels, if you like to dress like someone who likes rock music and you really love country music, that's fine. Do what you Enjoy. 3. Let go of your prejudices. Even if you think you're not prejudiced, sometimes negative thoughts about groups of people can root in your mind. Buried. Prejudices against religious groups, racial groups, LGBT groups, and so on, can taint your ability to see the world clearly, let go of these. Nobody is exactly like a stereotype, and seeing groups of people as just like those other ones inhibits knowing people for who they truly are. 4. Work on your work ethic. Yes, school can be very hard work, but in your teenage years, it matters more than ever. What you accomplish in your teen Years may determine in large part your opportunities in your adult life. Dedicate some time to studying and do your best to do well in middle school and high school. Aim to get things done as soon as possible instead of procrastinating. Being well organized is one of the best qualities you should strive for. Learn how to prioritize, whether it's with school, work, or any extracurricular activities you may be involved in. Boost your studying skills, and even make it fun. It may not seem enjoyable, but it's helpful later. On in life, and some teens, not only the nerds, do find it enjoyable. You don't have to be an all-AS student that's taking only honors or AP-level classes, but you should at least do your best to pass. The classes you're in. Avoid slacking off, as this hurts your grades. That said, do your best to recognize when you know something's not right or you need help. Do not struggle alone. Don't rush on your homework because you want to hang out 
with friends, work on it to learn new things. A largely forgotten. Fact is that school is meant for learning, not trapping you in a classroom for a few hours each day. 5. Avoid rushing to figure out who you are. Your teenage years are hectic, ever changing, and chances are, your interests will constantly shift and change. Nothing about yourself is set in stone, even at the end of your teenage years. You will continue to grow and develop as a person as long as you're alive. There's no need to figure yourself out and decide what you are at your age. Anyone who tells you that you need to figure out what college you're going to or what you plan for the future is wrong. Even if you think you've decided on what you're going to do, don't be surprised if your plans change, you never know where life is going to take you. Part 3. Developing Relationships Download Article 1. Work to improve your social skills. Some teens have trouble with social interaction, with the reasons behind it varying. Since social interaction is necessary in order to succeed, it's important to learn how to cope with shyness and social anxiety. Consider working with a friend or a family member of close age to develop your social skills. It may not replace new social exchanges, but it's good practice. If you have a disability like autism or ADHD, don't assume that you're doomed to be bad at socializing. People with disabilities can be charming in unique ways, especially if you work on being kind and developing good habits. 2. Refuse to judge people for harmless traits. While you may feel tempted to write someone off as annoying or difficult this can result in you judging them unfairly. Work on being accepting and patient when someone is different in ways you don't expect. Keep in mind that there may be something going on that you don't know about. A clingy guy may have been abandoned by a parent during childhood. A hyper girl may have ADHD and be struggling to keep friendships. Try to be understanding. Remember that just because you've had a bad experience with a person doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Tip, if someone is truly bothering you. It's okay to speak up gently. Say it. Bothers me when you do X. Would you please do Y? Use a gentle and positive tone to let them know that you're not criticizing them, just asking for a small adjustment. 3. Be polite towards others, including people you don't know well. Every day, you'll likely see people you don't know whether it be in school or out in public. It may seem funny to make fun of those that you don't know, but it's rude, and word will probably get back to them eventually. Later in life, you'll have to work with people you don't know, it's best to be polite towards strangers. If you can manage it, be friendly as well. It's appreciated by those around you. Even if you don't see it, don't laugh at people when they make mistakes like dropping or spilling things. Instead, offer help. This can help turn around a bad day, even if they don't show their appreciation outright. 4. Find a few good friends. You don't need to be at the top of the social food chain and know everybody at school but you should at least try to have a few loyal friends throughout your teenage years. Friendships are a good place to build your social skills, and building stable relationships with others can help. You determine what you want in friendships and romantic relationships you may pursue. 4. And most importantly of all, life is simply easier and brighter. 
with friends. Make sure your friends make you feel good about yourself and don't get you in trouble, you want to enjoy your teen years, not spend them miserable because of your friends. Find friends who make you feel good and inspire you to be your best. Hang out with friends you really like and worry less about. Maintaining relationships with people who don't improve your life. Friends come and go, and you may have different types and numbers of friends. That's okay. How many friends you have isn't important, it's the quality of the friends you do have that matters, as cliche as that sounds. If you struggle to find friends, try looking in areas where people are similar to you. Are you LGBT, for example? See if there's a teen LGBT group in your city, or if your school has a GSA that you could join. If you prefer writing over socializing, see if you can find writers groups. If you're autistic, try seeking out other autistic people to befriend. Try going on social media if you can't find friends face to face. However, be very careful with this. Online friendships develop much differently than face to face friendships, and many people online are not who they say they are, you never know what goes on behind the screen. Sometimes it may not be even an actual human you are talking to. Exercise caution when making friends online, and never agree to meet up with somebody in private. Avoid giving out personal information to people you Meet online unless you are sure that they can be trusted. It is best to meet people in real life first before meeting them on the internet. 5. Take romance slowly. Some, but not all, teens are interested in romantic relationships and may want to find a partner. If you get into a relationship, take it slowly and communicate with your partner well. This leads to the healthiest relationships in the long run. You don't need to be tethered to your partner. Either. Make sure the relationship allows the both of you to have your own friends and interests. You don't need to rush into anything before you're ready. 5. Make peace with things when a relationship doesn't work out. It's normal for it to hurt for a while. Remember that just because the relationship wasn't right doesn't mean that you're a bad person, sometimes two people are just a bad fit. And if you did do something wrong, you can learn from it for next time. It can be okay. Be wary of abusive relationships. If you feel like you have to constantly walk on eggshells around your partner to try and avoid them getting angry at you or hitting you, or if you can't talk to anybody else without your partner accusing you of cheating, these are huge red flags that the relationship is unhealthy and that you need to get out of it. The same applies. For toxic friendships. 6. Keep good relations with your family as much as possible. 6. Family. Members, especially parents, probably worry about you during your teenage years. Many teenagers become sullen, withdrawn, and stop valuing family as much as they used to. Try to avoid this. Family is one of the most important connections in your life, it's the building blocks for all relationships you develop, whether they're friendships, romantic relationships, or a family that you choose to have later on in life. And plus, you see them every day, why not? Make it nice to spend time with them. You don't have to be best friends with everyone in your family. 
but be kind to them and spend time with them once in a while. Play a video game with your sister, help your brother with his writing, offer to go on a walk with your mom, or play a board game with your dad. Don't just stay in your room all day and only see your family at meals. Improve your relationship with your siblings. It's fine to argue and bicker with siblings here and there, but remember that your sibling relationship is usually one of the longest in your life. Siblings can be great allies, mentors, and friends, not just now, but also when you're old and grey. Watch out for abusive family members. Your family can be some of the closest friends you have, but they can also negatively impact your life. If your parents constantly make you feel down, they may be emotionally abusing you. If your brother constantly hits you, that's a sign of physical abuse. Usually, talking things out with a close friend or confronting your abuser can lessen the hurt but know when to report child abuse. Keep close to your extended family, such as your cousins, too. Make an effort to spend time with them when you can. You probably don't see your extended family often, so take advantage of the time you do have to hang out with them. Part 4. Helping Others Download Article 1. Consider volunteer work. You may not be interested in volunteering or attaining a job, that's okay. Helping out others is only a recommendation. However, many volunteers report that their work makes them feel good, some volunteer work can even help with self-development. 7. Consider the benefits and drawbacks of volunteer work or jobs and use this to decide whether you'll help others out. 2. Avoid thinking that you can't help anybody. You don't have to get a job. When you're a teenager, and when you're under a certain age, it's nearly impossible to find one, but that doesn't mean that you're unable to help out. Consider volunteering, doing odd jobs for others, or helping someone to learn something they don't know. This can do wonders to help other people. It will be helpful for future employment after college to have a job or volunteer so you can have valuable work experience. Volunteering doesn't have to happen outside of the home. If you have an internet connection, you can volunteer online, for example, Editing WikiHow articles about your favorite subjects. 3. Build off of your interests and talents. Are you interested in animals? Volunteer at an animal shelter or collect supplies for your local non-profit. Shelter. Are you good with people? Find a job or volunteer work that's oriented. Around talking to others. Can you design complex web pages with minimal effort? Offer to help others learn web design. Take your talents and interests and find something you can do based around those. It can be a great help to volunteer or work and have fun at the same time. 4. Consider tutoring younger kids. If one of your talents is that you're an all AS, Scholar, see if there's a program at your school that allows you to tutor struggling students. If not, try asking families that have younger kids or advertising a tutoring service, you may get some great opportunities. It's okay to turn down a tutoring offer. If you can't tutor the neighbor's son because he's too loud and disruptive, or if you aren't good at a subject that somebody needs help with, it's okay. To politely say, I'm sorry, I can't do that job or I don't think. Your child and I work together very well. 
you can either choose to get paid for tutoring or do it for free. If you do choose to make it a job, however, don't overcharge. Few people will hire you if you charge $10 an hour. 5. Participate in fundraisers and activities for causes you support. Some Organizations will host activities to donate to certain causes, for example. Walks to support cancer research collect money and donate it to groups that do. Cancer research. Other activities seek to spread awareness of illnesses, or. Acceptance of disabled people. Consider participating in these. Be sure you know what group the activity is supporting. Some groups are well known for being surrounded by controversy. Do careful research on an organization before participating in any of their events. You don't want to support something that causes more harm than good. 6. Do things that make others happy. You don't need to participate in giant Volunteer organizations to make a difference. Consider doing basic things to help people have a brighter day, compliment your classmate's poem, tell someone they look fantastic, help somebody pick up their things if they drop them, hold the door open for others who are struggling to carry things, and so forth. Something that seems little to you can turn someone else's entire day around. Get out there and help to make the world a better place by making others' lives more enjoyable. Community Q&A Question How do I know what my passion is? Community Answer Your passion is what you love and enjoy doing, what never seems to get old. If you don't do anything that makes you feel that way, then get out and explore new things, especially things out of your comfort zone. Try new activities, take classes on subjects you've never taken before, and accept invites to things you're not familiar with. You can also delve deeper into a branch of an activity you already enjoy, for example, if you enjoy drawing pictures, try out photography. And remember, there's no rush to know what you enjoy right away, just stay open to opportunities and don't be afraid of trying something new. Not helpful 7 helpful 64. Question. Am I 18 if I am 12? Luna Rose. Top answerer. Not quite yet. You'd be considered a preteen since you're not yet 13. Of course. You can follow these steps even if you're not a teen yet. Not helpful 7 helpful 57. Question. How can I stop being so boring? Ruby. Top answerer. If you find yourself to be boring, it will because you yourself are bored. Find. Ways to cure your boredom, such as taking up a new hobby, volunteering, standing up for a cause, joining clubs, or exploring new places. Do what you enjoy. You may consider yourself to be boring because you aren't being honest with yourself and enjoying the things you like. Even if you are taking part in activities that others like, if you don't like it, then you will be bored. Focus more on being yourself and doing what you like, rather than trying to appear interesting to others. If you do this, you will naturally be perceived as interesting. As you are showing off what you are into and being your authentic self, you'll also be a lot happier in the process. How to stay out of trouble. Download article. Parts 1. Staying busy and active 2. Having good influences 3. Avoiding conflict Other sections Video Tips and warnings Related articles
References Article Summary Co-authored by Jeffrey Furman Last updated, the 17th of April, 2024 approved Sometimes it may seem like you're always getting into trouble with your teachers or your parents and that no matter what you do you just can't seem to get things right. The best thing to do is to stop trouble before it starts. It's always possible to start over a new leaf. There are a certain things you can do to improve your reputation. You will have to put in some effort at first but it'll be worth it. Part 1 Staying busy and active. Download article. 1. Join a sports team. Joining a sports team, whether it's a team at your school or in your community, is a great way to stay out of trouble. Whether you're playing soccer, basketball, or baseball, team sports are a great way to meet. Interesting, athletic and driven people and to find something to do other than get into trouble. You don't have to be the next LeBron to join a sports team and start making some meaningful connections with people. 1. You can even focus on becoming a leader on the team so you can use even more of your energy that way. Joining a sports team will also provide you with weekly exercise which can help you calm down and will keep you from using your energy the wrong way. 2. 2. Join a club. If sports aren't your thing, you can always join a club, whether it's through regular school, your church, or another community organization. You can join an art club, chess club, French club, cooking club, debating club, or Really all sorts of clubs that can help you focus on something you care about. That doesn't have to do with annoying your teachers or not doing your homework. 3. You can join a few clubs at first to get a feel of what would appeal to you the most. 3. Go volunteering. 4. Volunteering is another great way to stay out of trouble and to put things in perspective. You may not be as tempted to cause a ruckus in school or in your neighborhood after you spend some time with people who are truly in need. If you're too young to do it on your own, go with a parent to a volunteering event, whether you're helping people learn to read, cleaning up a local park, or working in a soup kitchen. Find something that is meaningful to you and commit to it at least once a week. Though your schedule doesn't have to be absolutely jam-packed. For you to stay out of trouble, doing a few things that matter to you each week can help you focus on what's important. 4. Be an active student. You don't have to get straight as to stay out of trouble but it certainly won't hurt you. Being an active student means showing up on time, not skipping class, raising your hand when you have questions, and doing the work in advance so you can participate. If you focus on being a good student, then you can stop thinking about ways to annoy your teachers or your parents. Find a few subjects that you really care about and work on. Knowing as much as you can about them. You don't have to find absolutely everything interesting, but picking at least one or two subjects that mean something to you can make a difference. Set goals for improving your grades. 5. You don't have to get perfect scores on every test but you can aim to go from a B to a B and average in math, for example. 5. Read as much as you can. Reading can help you improve your vocabulary and comprehension skills, become more knowledgeable and intelligent, and to see the world in a whole new way. 
What's more, if you're reading, then you're not getting into trouble. Getting truly immersed in a story or stories can help you forget the hours passing by and to be transported to a whole new world. A world where you're just an observer. Starting by reading for just 20 minutes. Before bedtime every night can help you develop an addicting lifelong habit. 6. Read a variety of books, from science fiction to fantasy, to see what genres you like the most. 6. Create something. Getting creative is another great way to stay out of trouble. You can write a play and perform it with your friends, write a story, draw something, make a ceramic pot, decorate your room as if it were a rainforest, and accomplish a number of other creative tasks. Using your mind to create something completely new and original is a great use of your energy and will keep you from getting creative when it comes to following the rules. You can even sign up for an art class after school, or ask your art teacher if she has any extra projects in store for you. Part 2. Having good influences. Download article. 1. Follow your instincts. You may have gotten into trouble in the past because you didn't follow your instincts. 7. If your instincts are telling you that something is a bad idea, or that some person is not worth hanging out with, then you should trust them and stay away. Don't be afraid to trust your gut if it's telling you to run 100 miles, 160 kilometers, in the other direction. If you have a sense that something is wrong, even if you can't pinpoint why, then chances are, you're right. 8. In general, if a friend suggests that you do something and you have to question it even once, then it's time to back off. 2. Spend time with your family. As long as your family is a place where you feel safe and loved, you should spend as much time as you can with the members of your family so that you are surrounded by positive influences. Sure, it may not feel cool to have movie night with mom and dad or to help your kid sister with her science project, but your family will always be there for you, and it's important to build a healthy bond with your family members as much as you can. 9. When you're hanging out with your family, you won't have a chance to get in trouble, will you? It's really true that idle hands make the devil's work, and the more time you spend with your family, the less time you'll be spending looking for and getting into trouble. Make a weekly routine for yourself. Have family nights every weekend, time for doing chores during the week, and time for Helping out your siblings at least once or twice a week. 3. Avoid the wrong people. The people who may be getting you in trouble may be your very best friends. If that's the case, then it's time to find some new best friends. Sure, that may not be what you wanted to hear, but if you really want to stay out of trouble, then you can't hang out with the same people who got you into detention. Sure, if you and all of your friends have decided to stay out of trouble together, that's another thing, but how often does that happen? It's time to slowly back away from the people who are causing you to harm your own reputation as kindly and as politely as possible. You may think that you can decide to stay on track while staying friends with people who are always getting into trouble, but unfortunately, you will still be associated with them, and will be much more likely to get in trouble for something they did, even if you were innocent. Nobody said this was fair. 4. 
Make friends who are positive influences. If you're friends with people who are good students, have meaningful goals, and live positive lives, then you're very likely to have them rub off on you. If you're only friends with negative troublemakers, then you're much more likely to be one. Though it may be hard to immediately find new friends who are doing great in school, look around your classes or your neighborhood and see if you can find people who seem nice, friendly, and willing to take in a straggler. Soon, you'll see that you're staying out of trouble by doing fun things with new, like-minded people. 10. You can find these friends in clubs or sports teams or by participating in a variety of other activities. 5. Develop positive relationships with your teachers. Another great way to stay out of trouble is to develop a strong bond with your teachers, or at least some of them. This doesn't mean you have to suck up to them or try to be their best friend, but it does mean that you should be a good student, show up to class on time, come in for extra help, and ask useful questions during class too. Show that you care. If you're off to a rough start with some of your teachers, know that you can win them over with enough hard work and effort, even if it does take time. 11. Being on your teacher's good sides is an excellent way to stay out of trouble. If they like you, they will be less likely to punish you or to find fault with you. 6. Find a role model. Having a role model that you really look up to can help you succeed and to make the right decisions. Your role model can be your mom or dad, an older sibling, a teacher at school, a family friend in the neighborhood, a club or church leader, a grandparent, or really anyone who inspires you to do well in life. You can come to this person for advice on how to not only stay out of trouble, but on how to do something meaningful with your life. 12. A role model that you can come to regularly can end up being one of the biggest and most long-lasting influences on your life. It's important to find a person who is living a life that you admire. This doesn't mean that your role model has to be perfect. If he made mistakes along the way and learned from them, then even better. Part 3. Avoiding Conflict Download Article 1. Don't Gossip 13. One way to avoid any kind of conflict is to not gossip, whether you're gossiping about your teachers, your classmates, your friends in the neighborhood, or even your cousins. Gossiping about other people only sends bad vibes, and this will inevitably get back to people in the end. You should focus on saying positive things about people, even if nobody else is feeling very positive, if you want to stay out of trouble. 14. If you're saying bad stuff about people, it's more likely than not that it will eventually get back to them. And if it does, you may be in for some big trouble. Be careful on social media, too, you may trust people but later it come around and get you. 2. Don't try to reason with unreasonable people. 15. One of the reasons you may be getting in trouble is because you find the need to defend or explain yourself to people who just aren't willing to listen. If you and a kid in your gym class or down the street just don't get along, then stay away. Resist the urge to set the record straight, tell people why they're acting poorly, or just to stick your head somewhere where it doesn't belong. Instead, get as much distance between you and volatile or annoying people as possible, and you'll be much 
more likely to stay out of trouble. Reasoning with people who don't want to hear it is guaranteed to get you nowhere, fast. It's a waste of both time and energy. 3. Avoid fighting. Obviously, if you're the kind of kid who always gets into fights, then this is easier said than done. But if you really want to stay out of trouble, then you have to know how to walk away from a fight. If someone is trying to provoke you, calling you names, or just getting all up in your face, learn to take deep breaths, walk away, and keep your cool. Pouncing on those people, getting hurt, and getting sent to the principal's office or to your room is just no fun, so the next time the opportunity to fight presents itself, remind yourself that, even if it may feel good to punch someone for a few seconds, long term, it'll only do you harm. Literally just walk away. If someone is coming at you, put your hands up and leave. This does not make you a coward it makes you smart. 4. Don't talk back to your teachers. You won't be best friends with all of your teachers, no matter how hard you try, and there will always be a teacher or two that you just don't get along with. Even if you really disagree with everything your teacher is saying, you should just be polite, try to do the best you can, and avoid any arguments that may arise. If your teacher asks you to do something, do it, unless it's completely unreasonable. This is not the time to look tough or to say what's really on your mind. When you're in school, it's time to be well behaved and to get on with your studies. When you become an adult and start your own career path, you can begin to question authority and the world around you a bit more openly, but in the beginning, you have to play the game. 5. Be polite to everyone. Being kind and polite can go a long way in helping you stay out of trouble. Say please and thank you and be polite to everyone. From a random neighbor who passes by you every morning to the crossing. God. Developing a habit of good manners and good social skills will help you throughout your life, and it's a great way to keep yourself out of trouble. If you're rude or mean to people, you'll develop a reputation of being a bad seed. And no one will be in your court when you are called into question. 16. This means be nice to your family members, too. Don't think that they know you too well for you to really be polite around them. 6. Take good care of yourself. You may not think that getting enough rest, eating three healthy meals, and getting some form of exercise every day has anything to with staying out of trouble, but you're wrong. Taking care of your body means you're taking care of your mind, 17, and if your body and mind are in good shape, you're less likely to act out or get in trouble, for example, if you're hungry or exhausted from staying up all night playing video games, you're much more likely to say something rude to an adult without meaning to. 18. Also, if you're focusing on your own well-being, then you won't have time to cause trouble. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Video. Tips. Even if your friends are getting bullied or something don't stick up for them, tell. A teacher. If it's physical activity while you're with your friend, by all means, stand up for them by telling a teacher. But don't go overboard. Avoid blaming forward slash being mean in school. Teachers will have a harder time joining your side. Tips from our readers. If you get in trouble for forgetting to do your homework, 
start making notes about what assignments you need to do. Make a small notebook by stapling pieces of paper together so you can keep it in your pocket and write down the homework when it's assigned. Or, write in your planner or set a reminder on your phone. If you find yourself getting in trouble when you're bored, keep yourself busy and distract yourself. Try sports, clubs, events, volunteering, or chores. Do not fight with your siblings, even if they annoy you. Help out around your home as often as possible, too. Stay away from alcoholic beverages, drugs, and smoking. Give respect to all. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Don't start a blame war. They don't end well. Don't start trouble. How to be a normal teen, girls. Download article. Steps. Steps. Other sections. Video. Tips and warnings. Related articles. Expert interview. Co-authored by Alexandra Yanelli. Last updated, the 26th of June, 2024. Are you tired of being criticized for not being a normal teen? Do you want to know how to be a normal teen? This article will show you how to be a normal teen. Steps. Download article. 1. Know that there is no specific attitude. Just go with the flow and be yourself. There is no such thing as normal, normal means to fit in well with society. 2. Wear clothes that express you. You don't have to look like that model in. 17. Develop your own style as you go along. If you wear unusual clothing with confidence, you can still be normal. 3. Be mindful of those around you if you choose to swear. It is important to respect that others might find vulgar language distasteful, including many adults. Some teens choose to abstain completely from swearing, and that's fine, too. 4. Choose your friends wisely. Yes, you're going to meet people who do mean things. But you don't have to be one of those people. You can be whatever and hang with whoever. If your friends don't treat you the way you deserve, or if they pressure you to do things you're not comfortable with, you can choose new friends. 5. Be active. Don't just lay around the house. Get out and go to the pool with your friends. Go talk to boys, play a sport, do whatever you find fun. 6. Have a healthy social life. Lots of girls these days have Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Pinterest, etc. You do not have to have these to have a social life. Socialize face to face with people. 7. Be confident. 8. Refrain from obsessing about money or talking about how much your parents make. You can be cool and normal no matter what your family's economic status. 9. Keep your hygiene up. Take a shower or bathe every day and use. Antiperspirant. Brush your hair and teeth, floss, use mouthwash, daily stuff. 10. Make the grade. Try your best in school. Getting straight A's is excellent, it's not nerdy at all. Make high goals for your academic life, and try your best to achieve them. 11. Have a life. Normal girls have best friends and hang out with guys. They occasionally get into trouble with things such as ding-dong ditch, but nothing 
too life-changing. 12. Remember that normal doesn't exist. Be yourself, no one likes a poser. 13. Find a friend who you can tell everything to, someone you can trust. 100%. Don't bottle everything up. How to act at a girl's house. Download article. Methods. 1. Acting when you're alone together. 2. Acting around her family. 3. Staying with her for longer periods. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Erica Kaplan. Last updated, the 6th of August, 2023 references. You are super excited that your girlfriend, friend, or crush has invited you over and suddenly the nervousness hits you. Whether meeting the family, just spending quality time together, or moving in for a longer period of time, the number one rule is to be honest, courteous, and respectful. Method 1. Acting when you're alone together. Download article. 1. Ask for a tour to get a lay of the land. This is an especially good thing to do if you feel awkward or unsure what to do when you first arrive. Keep an eye out for decorations, old pictures, and music or book collections all excellent. Conversation starters and places to stop and chat. 2. Let her take the lead on activities and fun. More often than not, she'll have some specific things she might want to show you or favorite activities around the house. If she invites you over, remember to be a good guest and let her be a good host. If things are shy or awkward, you can, of course, suggest things to do. But try and step back and let her take the lead, respecting her and her house, before blurting out the things you want to do. Don't worry if there is some shy awkwardness early on this is normal. It will pass. 3. Help out with any chores or activities she has, like cleaning dishes after a shared meal. Just because you're a guest doesn't mean you have to let her do. All of the work. If she's got some chores to do, offer to lend a hand instead of flipping on the TV and zoning out until she's done. Think of it this way the faster chores are done, the sooner you can hang out. Want to really impress her? Don't ask to help, just start pitching. In tackling the dishes while she mops, grabbing clean towels. Changing the laundry when it beeps, etc. 4. Leave things how you found them. Never assume that it is no big deal just. Because you might leave the toilet seat up at your house, don't use a coaster, or leave books out on the counter when you're done with them. Assume her level of cleanliness, not yours. The best approach is to return things to their Condition when you arrived, allowing her to dictate what things are important and what things she doesn't mind you exploring or tampering with. You don't have to act like you're in a museum. Just be courteous and don't leave a mess behind you. Make sure you're not creating more work than when you started. If you don't know where the dishes go, don't just start. Sticking them places to get them out of the way. 5. Be respectful and honest with any romantic advances. Just because a girl invites you over is not an invitation into her bed. This fact may seem obvious. But it can be confusing if you're visiting for the first time and are unsure what she wants to do. The best advice is to move slowly, escalating romance one step at a time, cuddling, kissing, making out, etc., 
instead of just assuming you will be going all the way once you walk in the door. Like any other situation, you should always ask for consent before moving on romantically or sexually. 6. Talk about how long you will be alone together. If her parents or siblings are expected to walk through the door, make sure you both know in advance. Talk about whether they are okay with you being there, as well as the appropriate behavior when they arrive. You should know, for example, if her parents don't want you together in her room. Method 2. Acting around her family. Download article. 1. Talk to her about any important family information before you arrive. You don't need an encyclopedia on the family, but you should know if there are any topics to avoid around the dinner table. Be inquisitive what do her parents do? What hobbies do they enjoy? Are there any special circumstances to be aware of? Showing you care enough to ask questions will make everyone's experience much smoother. Does she know any common ground you might have with her family or places where you might naturally find conversation? Is there anything you can bring as a small thank you gift? While a bottle of wine is the classic choice, it won't go over well. If they don't drink or you're a minor. 2. Offer to help do the dishes and aid with small tasks. Even if they refuse, it is. The thought that counts. To be a truly considerate guest, just start helping clear. The table once dinner is over, taking the initiative and showing your respect. While you aren't there to become a temporary handyman, just asking if you can. Lend a hand will go a long way. 1. This is a great way to show her family that you're independent. Enough to stand on your own two feet, and that you're with your girlfriend for the right reason. 3. Keep physical contact PG rated, but don't feel like you must avoid it. Completely. It will look a little strange if you're suddenly distant with your girl. While you don't want to be lewd, holding her hand occasionally or putting an arm around her is a simple, sweet way to show your affection. Check in with her if you think her family would frown on any physical contact. If you're in doubt, let her initiate anything and just follow her lead. 2. 4. Be yourself instead of trying to be a perfect partner. You're going to be nervous or stressed, and that is okay. But don't convince yourself that you need to shape your behavior to become a perfect partner. They don't exist. Mind your manners, introduce yourself with a smile and firm handshake, and then be yourself. Imagine you're meeting a professor or teacher for the first time, or a new business contact instead of your potential in-laws. Tell stories about yourself, be honest about your goals and hopes, and don't be afraid to crack a low-key joke or two if it feels right. Stop second-guessing every action and just be yourself. 3. Speak genuinely about your girlfriend and let her family know what you like about her. That's a great way to make a good impression. 5. Embrace the culture and atmosphere of her family with an open mind. If a new food is put in front of you, try it with a smile. When the family has a moment of prayer, bow your head respectfully, even if you don't share their faith. Your overriding principle is to just go with the flow. You are being welcomed into their family, so accept that invitation with open arms. The more you learn about a girl's family, the more you also learn about her. 
This doesn't mean you need to lie or change your personal beliefs in order to fit in. It simply means trying to listen and learn instead of making things about you. 4. Method 3. Staying with her for longer periods Download article 1. Help out with general house chores and maintenance. If you're going to be a good house guest, you need to help out around the house. Most importantly, don't wait for her to ask you to do something if you notice it needs to be done. Staying with someone requires both sides to work together to keep the space happy and livable. Some chores to look out for include watering plants, doing dishes, washing sheets, blankets, and towels, tending to pets, vacuuming. 2. Defer to her preferences when tending the house. There are going to be some things that she likes a particular way, even if they don't make sense to you. Maybe her spice rack is particularly organized for easy cooking, or she likes the towels folded particularly. Everyone, including you, has little quirks and preferences for your living conditions so be sure to respect hers. Being considerate is not so much about the spice rack or the towels. It is about understanding her personal space and preferences. She likely has her things in very particular orders and places. Be respectful and ask questions when storing your own stuff. You may have ways of doing things you may think are better or more logical but remember that this isn't your house. At the end of the day, her preferences for her stuff take priority. 5. 3. Discuss a fair way to split any expenses, such as food, early on. If you're staying at her house, you should be willing to help cover at least some of the expenses, particularly food. While she may have it covered, she may also want to split rent or utilities, depending on how long you will be staying. Don't just assume that everything's good. Make a point to ask her about finances before unsaid arguments become a problem. Talking about money is never fun, but it is essential to preserve a strong, healthy relationship. 4. Establish ground rules about any specific living quirks or desires. Maybe. She needs a little quiet time when she gets home from work. Perhaps you both really like to shower before leaving, but need to work out a way that you both have enough time. The best way to handle these situations is to talk about them. As they come up finding compromise early on instead of waiting until one of you is upset. Common things to cover include Who does what chores or house maintenance tasks? Etiquette for inviting other people over for Visits forward slash dinner forward slash hanging out forward slash etc. Your usual routines, including sleep schedules, and how to be Respectful of them. 6. 5. Talk openly and honestly about any romantic expectations. Talking about romance may be the least romantic thing you can do, but it is absolutely necessary. Whether you're sharing a bed with a partner or just friends living together, sit down and talk about physical intimacy together early on. If you're a couple, think about how often you'd like to be together and promise each other to be honest about your mood and feelings. If one of you says no, remind each other that is a firm no, not something to be negotiated. If you're just friends, talk about when and how it is acceptable to bring someone home with you, and the etiquette about dating and the house. 6. 
Treat her house with respect, not like your personal property. Staying with someone for a long time, whether you're dating them or not, tends to lead to some relaxed rules and ideas. But just because you get comfortable in the house doesn't mean it is suddenly yours all of your basic manners still apply. Clean up any of your messes, put things back where they belong, and respect her rules and preferences and you should be more than okay. How to act at a girl's house is about being a considerate, kind person it's not rocket science. Keep in mind that you're in her house, meaning your footprint is going to impact her directly. If, for example, you know that she pays the water bill, don't take 30 minutes showers. Expert Q&A Ask a question. Submit. Tips. If you eat anything, pick it up and set it where it needs to be. Clean your plate out. And set it in the sink. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. There is no perfect way to act, so don't fret. Relaxing is hard, but only gets easier the longer you stick around. How to be a loner in school. Download article. Methods. 1. Acting like a loner. 2. Adopting the correct body language. 3. Participating in class. Plus show one more. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Related articles. References Article Summary Co-authored by Katie Stizik Last updated, the 21st of March, 2024 References Not everybody likes to join others and be social during school. Being a loner in school means you don't want to make friends or interact with your peers. To be a loner, keep to yourself. Use the right body language, and focus on your interests. Method 1. Acting like a loner. Download article. 1. Keep to yourself at school functions. If you have to go to school functions, like a pep rally or assembly, sit by yourself if you can. Sit at the back of the room if possible. You may want to put on headphones and listen to music, read a book, or play on your phone. 1. If you can, try to get out of going to school functions. But don't skip it if you are going to get in trouble. 2. Sit alone at lunch. Lunch is one of the most common times during the school day where people socialize. However, if you want to be a loner, you should sit alone if you can. Try sitting at a table by yourself or on the floor, if your school allows that. If you cannot sit in an area by yourself, sit at the end of a table with people you don't know. Find solitary activities to do during lunch. For example, you can draw, read or listen to music. If your school will allow it, go to the library or a teacher's classroom where you can eat lunch alone. If your school has open lunch, you can go uptown to restaurants and other places to eat lunch or you can go home if you live close to the school. 3. Keep to yourself during physical education. PE is another time during the School day where people try to talk to you and get you involved. Keep to yourself during PE. If you have a choice of activity, consider walking, running, or lifting weights alone. If you are allowed, put on your headphones and listen to music. If your teacher makes you participate with others, do what you have to do well in the class. Play basketball or volleyball on the team, 
but don't go out of your way to talk to people. If your teacher will allow you to, sit on the bleachers or off to the side whenever you can. 4. Avoid starting conversations with people. Loners keep to themselves and don't go out of their way to talk to other students. This means you wouldn't go up to someone and start talking to them or join in a conversation when you're in a group. Instead, you should keep to yourself. 2. If someone speaks directly to you, don't be rude. Answer the question, but don't follow up or ask the person a question in return. 5. Focus on your interests. One way to be a loner in school is to engage in your interests during the day. This may mean taking classes you are interested in, like art or music classes. Spend your downtime at school doing things you like. 3. 6. Choose classes that let you be independent. When you are choosing elective classes, choose ones that will let you work independently or that don't require group activities. Some classes that may let you be independent include computer or technology classes, shop classes, art classes, music classes, or foreign language classes. You may also want to take sports classes that allow you to exercise alone, like weightlifting or cross country. Since you are a loner, you wouldn't want to take drama or chorus classes. Independent vocal or instrumental music lessons, such as piano are a better class to take. Method 2. Adopting the correct body language. Download article. 1. Avoid making eye contact with people. Loners keep to themselves and don't want people to try to interact with them. To help with this, discourage people from approaching or talking to you by keeping your eyes down. Don't look people in the eye and encourage them to speak to you. Make sure not to make eye contact with people in areas where they might come and talk to you, like in the lunchroom or the classroom. To show respect, be sure to make eye contact with teachers and other authority figures. Two. Keep your arms folded. Try folding your arms over your chest. This signals that you don't want to be bothered and want to be left alone. This body position helps make you look closed off and unapproachable. Fold your arms loosely across your body and keep your head down. This will help people realize you don't want to be bothered. Three. Use accessories to keep people away. Adding accessories helps put up a barrier between you and others. They will see you doing something with the accessory and not disturb you. The accessories also give you a reason to ignore everyone around you. For example, you can wear headphones, read a book, look on your smartphone, or draw on a sketchpad. Method 3. Participating in class. Download article. 1. Ask if you can work alone. If your teacher puts people in groups, ask them if you can work alone. Generally, loners don't like to work and interact with other students. If your teacher gives you the option to work together or alone, work alone. If your teacher won't allow you to work alone, do your part of the group work, but don't talk to the other students unless you have to. 2. Pay attention in class. You may prefer to be a loner and not socialize with your peers, but that doesn't mean you should ignore your classes. One way to 
successfully be a loner is to focus on your studies and be a good student. 4. Listen in class, take notes, and study so you will make good grades. It doesn't make a difference where you sit in class, just as long as you are paying attention. 3. Ask and answer questions in class. Being a loner doesn't mean that you can't speak up and participate in class. Raise your hand and ask questions when you have one. If the teacher calls on you or asks a question, answer. 5. Being a loner means you don't really hang around with other students. It doesn't mean you don't participate in class. Method. 4. Connecting with others. Download article. 1. Look for a friend outside of school. If you aren't interested in being friends. With people at school, consider friends or acquaintances outside of school. This may be a cousin or neighbor. You may also look for friends or acquaintances at any out-of-school activities. 6. For example, you may meet people at a music or computer class. In the community, you may consider getting a tutor through the Boys and Girls Club or with a local college kid who can teach you a skill. Even if you prefer to be a loner, it's healthy to connect with people sometimes, even if it's only one or two other people who share similar interests as you or who you get along with. 7. 2. Join out-of-school activities. You don't have to join clubs or organizations. Through the school, you can instead find a club or organization to get involved in through the community. You may do things through the library, with a religious organization, or through a volunteer group. 8. Many communities have after-school clubs you can get involved with. Doing things through a community organization allows you a chance to be a loner while still enjoying doing things. Expert tip. Alicia Oglisby. Professional school counselor. Try to stretch yourself socially. If you're an introvert, you can cherish your alone time while still challenging yourself to occasionally mingle to start by joining one extracurricular activity so you don't get overwhelmed. Plus, you can still set aside at least a couple weeknights with no plans so you can still relax and recharge. 3. Consider making friends with other loners. You may not want to be friends with most of the people at your school, but you may find other loners and shy kids you can connect with. Maybe there are other kids who are sitting by themselves that you can talk to or work with on projects. 9. You may also look for shy people or introverts in any clubs or organizations. These people may have similar interests as you. Expert Q&A Question What can I do to keep myself busy during lunch and on the bus? Katie Stizik Professional School Counselor Expert answer. If it's allowed, bring a book to recess, lunch, and on the bus with you so you have something to do when there's unstructured time during the school day. Not helpful 15 helpful 59. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. If your school allows it, you can wear headphones and listen to music or Anything you like to put people off talking to you. You can just have your ear. Buds or headphones in place as a deterrent, you don't have to have anything. Playing. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Many people view loners as weird or creepy and may be a target for bullying. 
harassment, and a possible mental health evaluation. You should be aware of that before considering choosing this lifestyle. You might also like 80 of the best would you rather. Prompts Download article An exhaustive list of the juiciest icebreaker questions Co-authored by Luke Smith, MFA reviewed by John Keegan Last updated, the 21st of November, 2022 Fact checked Funny Flirty Gross Scary Pop culture Deep Hard. Would you rather break the ice with a new group of people, or have everyone sit in? Awkward silence. How about this one, would you rather endure small talk, or get straight to the hard-hitting questions? The answers are obvious, at least for us, which is why we've assembled 80 of the funniest, flirtiest, grossest, scariest, and deepest wood. You rather questions. Get ready to make some tough calls, because these are sure to get any group talking. Things you should know. Ask funny would you rather questions around friends or new acquaintances. Use flirty would you rather questions on your date or your crush. Ask deep or hard would you rather questions to skip straight to the profound. Conversation. Funny. Download article. Let your dad or let your ex make your next dating app profile. 2. Have to fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses. 3. Have toes for fingers or fingers for toes. 4. Have your ringtone be someone screaming or someone cursing. Always have your shoes untied or always have toilet paper stuck. To your shoe. 6. Only take 4-hour baths or only take cold showers. 7. Burp every time you kiss someone or pass gas every time you're introduced to someone. 1. 8. Only listen to music you hate or only listen to music everyone else hates. 9. Be a human in a zoo exhibit or a wild animal in a crowded city. Be intensely afraid of cars or intensely afraid of digital screens. 11. Only eat food that's too spicy, for you, or only eat food with no flavor. 12. Have a permanent terrible haircut or only dress in terrible outfits. 13. Let your parents or let your boss see your browsing history. Flirty. Download article. 1. Kiss a stranger or kiss your best friend. Compete on Love is Blind or compete on Love Island. 2. 3. Go on a movie date or a concert date. 4. Play Spin the Bottle or play Truth or Dare. 5. Get back with your ex or be roommates with your ex. 6. Have the perfect partner only for a year or have an okay partner. For life. Hold hands with your celebrity crush or kiss your real life. Crush. 8. Go on a blind date or go on a speed date. 9. Be good at physical intimacy or good at emotional intimacy. 10. Have a good date with the wrong person or have a bad date with the perfect person. 11. Propose or be proposed to in public or in private. Gross. Download article. Sweat liquid cheese or constantly smell like skunk. 3. 2. Live in the sewer or spend every night in a porte potty. 3. Drink spoiled milk or eat moldy bread. 4. Have a runny nose for a full day without tissues or have a visible rash for a week. 4. 5. Use lotion as toothpaste or toothpaste as lotion. Always need to sneeze or always need to use the bathroom. 7. Have rats in your kitchen or roaches in your bed. 8. Use someone else's dirty underwear or use someone else's toothbrush. 9. 
always wear wet socks or never wear anything. 10. Walk barefoot through poison ivy or walk barefoot through a dirty litter box. Scary. Download article. Spend the night in an abandoned hospital or spend the night in a graveyard. 2. Encounter a ghost or encounter an alien. 3. Wake up during surgery or witness a murder. 4. Be hunted by Michael Myers from Halloween or be hunted by the Predator. 5. Go bungee jumping with a frayed bungee cord or skydive with a parachute that has holes. Be trapped in a maze or trapped in a tight space. 7. Commit murder or be murdered. 8. Have to survive zombies or have to survive a natural disaster. 9. Know how you're going to die or know when you're going to die. 10. Save 10 strangers or save one close friend. Be buried alive or fall to your death. Pop culture. Download article. 1. Spend a day with Lizzo or a day with Dolly Parton. 2. Be Harry Styles or date Harry Styles. 3. Watch only The Office or only Parks and Recreation for the rest of your life. 4. Use only Twitter or only Instagram for the rest of your life. Be an influencer or a Hollywood actor. 6. Go to the Euphoria School or go to the Sex Education School. 7. Have only Netflix or have only Spotify. 8. Watch only animated movies or only live action movies. 9. Live in a Disney movie or live in a DreamWorks movie. Have free lifetime tickets to Lady Gaga concerts or to Beyoncé. Concerts. 11. Make your favorite book into a movie or into a television. Series. Deep. Download article. 1. Lose all your friends by doing the right thing or gain new friends. By doing something terrible. 5. 2. Live a very long and dull life or live a very short and fun life. 3. Lose all your memories or lose all your talents. Be a great but unrecognized artist or be a terrible but famous artist. 5. Have brilliant but mean friends or have dull but kind friends. 6. Be wealthy and unhappy or broke and happy. 7. Be able to pause your life or be able to rewind your life. 8. Be buried or cremated. Earn your achievements or be able to buy your way into success. 10. Your funeral be sad or your funeral be celebratory. 11. Find your soulmate or find your purpose. 12. Die before or after your soulmate. Hard. Download article. 1. Serve a 5-year prison sentence or be in a coma for 10 years. Live without all social media or live without a phone. 3. Forget how to speak or constantly say things you don't mean. 4. Be a respected author or a respected actor. 5. Always be tired with things to do or always be energetic with nothing to do. 6. Always have a charged phone or always have gas in your car. Get a paper cut every time you touch something or get a headache every time you open your eyes. 8. Have the same dream every night or always have the same song stuck in your head. 9. Solve world hunger or solve climate change. 10. Change the results of the last election or decide who wins in the Next election. Lose your short-term memory or lose your long-term memory. Expert Q&A. Ask a question.